Ukraine was fast asleep when Russia's Vladimir Putin declared war at around 5 in the morning of February 24, 2022. Moments after that fateful speech, missiles pounded Ukraine and Russian forces attacked the country from air, land and sea. Pundits expected a quick capture of Kyiv amid Moscow's military might, but one year on, Ukraine still stands strong, tall and free. So what has been driving Ukraine's resolve? What have been the broad implications of Russia's invasion? And what lies ahead for the warfare between Putin and Zelensky? Welcome to Issues and Insiders. Today we address the plight of the people in Ukraine as the country marks one year of Russian invasion. For more, I have Hannah Hopko, the co-founder of the International Center for Ukrainian Victory, live on the line from Kyiv. Hannah, it's a pleasure to have you back. It's my honor. Thank you for having me. Right. I also have Evelina Sharevko here in the studio with me. Evelina, it's a pleasure as well. Thank you, Sonny. Nice to meet you. Right, Evelena. Let's start off then with a few words about the timeline of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Uh, yeah, so today marks a year since the beginning of a Russian full-scale invasion of Ukraine. But yet let's not forget that an actual invasion and actual war against Ukraine has started nine years ago with the illegal occupation of Crimea and eastern Donbass. Uh, on February 22, uh, Russia started to bomb uh, Ukrainian cities to uh, destroy infrastructure and to kill civilians all over the country. This is a e new colonial war against a sovereign and peaceful country, and this is an attempt uh, to restore an imperial and expansionist uh, ambitions. And um, yes, it was a really hard year for every Ukrainian. Just think about all of these mass killings and uh, victims in Bucha that were brutally murdered by Russian army. Think about the city of Mariupol that was nearly completely wiped off with uh, uh, Russian bombs and, uh, and different weapons. Think about Kharkiv, a city with a rich architecture and cultural heritage that has been constantly bombed with the, uh, with the Russian um, and, and shelled by the Russians. And yet it was also a year of resistance, a year of unity and a year of strength. And um, Russians wanted to take Kiev in, in three days. Well, not only they didn't take Kiev in three days, but they had to retreat from Kharkiv, from Kiev region, from Kherson. And uh, ultimately, thanks to the Ukrainian armed, uh, thanks to the armed forces of Ukraine, uh, we stopped the invasion and we liberated most of the uh, occupied territories and we are keep fighting for the Donbass region right now. Right. Hannah, as Evelina just said, would you say the liberation perhaps of Kherson by Ukrainian forces back in November uh, after Russian soldiers invaded it in early March last year served to perhaps boost morale within Ukraine against Vladimir Putin? Thank you for this question. Uh, boosting morale is probably not the right term because Ukrainians have fought w with uh, Russian terrorists, with uh, genociders, terrorists for over more than uh, 300 years. So, of course, uh, for us, the liberation of all our countries is a key goal. And we Ukrainians are united as never before to see every inch of Ukrainian land, Ukrainian territory, must be and will be free from Russian occupiers. And also we are uh, united in our belief that all Russian war criminals will be sitting in international tribunal and the justice will take place. And this is really important for the future that never again Russian colonial war against independent sovereign state, because it's not just about Ukraine. Let's remind me that after the Soviet Union collapsed, Russia invaded Moldova, Georgia, also supported the terrorism in Syria. Also, Wagner Group, the terrorists, are active in Venezuela and in Ukraine. So, of course, for us, it's really important to understand the mission of Ukraine to tackle terrorists and actually to stop genocidal war. Hannah, U.S. President Joe Biden paid a surprise visit to Ukraine earlier this week to meet with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. Now, Mr. Biden has spoken of unwavering support for Kyiv for as long as it takes. How do you respond to these words of commitment behind the cause of freedom for Ukraine? We are very thankful for, uh, to our strategic partner, U.S., NATO, and 
Asian countries like South Korea, Japan. Uh, but we want to understand that uh, everyone to understand in this planet that this is not just the war against Ukraine. It's the war against the Russian genocidal war against the whole world. This is why we urge now after a year of genocide and nine years of Russian ongoing aggression, we want more support, more weapons. Time uh, matters for us because Ukraine is bleeding despite our strong fighting spirit. We don't want to lose the best of our people. Because this war for us, like for uh, your country in 1953, so of course we want to save the best engineers, IT specialists, which are today in the battlefield, uh, trying to kick Russians out from our territory. So the more and faster, at bigger scale support we receive, the quicker Ukraine win and this is in the interest of the whole uh, uh, um, um, democratic nations and it's the way to prevent to deter uh, another authoritarian regime for example china from aggressive behavior and evelina you have family and friends over in ukraine how has russia's invasion affected their daily lives well, actually, just in the second day of a full-scale invasion, a rocket hit an apartment building in Kiev uh, that is located right in front of our house, just in some 100 meters away from it. And my parents directly saw it, and they had to spend the next three days in the basement. And this is my personal story, but um, every Ukrainian has similar story to share. And there is no family that has not been affected by the Russian aggression against Ukraine bombings of the residential areas as it was a uh, few weeks ago in Dnipro or uh, the destruction of uh, the infrastructure affects everyone. And um, now Ru Russians, they are, what they are doing, they are terrorizing the civilians by uh, targeting the electric uh, stations and those living people with no electricity, no heat and no running water. And this is a winter time in Ukraine. And um, People have to, to work from the gasoline uh, stations or uh, due to the electricity blackouts, or they have to work even from the bus tubes during the constant air rate alarms. And what is worse, the biggest victims of this war are the most vulnerable citizens of Ukraine, particularly elderly uh, and kids who simply cannot access the basic services and receive an urgent treatment at the hospitals. And yet, uh, Ukrainians uh, don't give up. They are ready to, to sacrifice. They are ready to, uh, to do whatever it takes uh, to fasten Ukrainian victory, whether it means saving electricity or uh, volunteering, donating to some uh, private and governmental funds, uh, creating some initiatives, uh, because uh, we have no choice but to win this war. And um, eventually, uh, many people they, uh, decided to fight and to defend their country. Many of my friends and classmates are, are fighting at the very far front right now. And I feel that this shows the Ukrainian spirit very well, because we are fighting for our country, for our people and for our culture. Right. And while that is happening, Hanna, what can you tell us about the lives, meanwhile, of the Ukrainian refugees who remain far from their home as we speak? I want you to understand that this is 2023, it's not 1943. And now Ukrainians have to shelter with our uh, fellow Europeans because uh, in last century, uh, this uh, fascist re regime together with Hitler wasn't ended, wasn't punished. So of course, we are all separated, many Ukrainian families, millions of refugees, uh, praying to God and fighting, uh, collecting money, uh, contributing to Ukrainian armed forces because they united in the dream that victory comes faster and they all will be back home. So this is really important that um, people abroad, Ukrainians, they are um, a part of our resistance because uh, they um, support Ukrainian armed forces. They are doing people's uh, diplomacy um, everywhere. And they uh, uh, fight together with uh, people who are in the battlefield for common victory. And they are also explaining our uh, foreign um, partners what's happening in Ukraine and why this pain, uh, this war atrocities must stop faster and why we need to finish the war in 2023, not to allow uh, another year of genocide against us 
and not to allow this devastation go goes beyond the Ukrainian borders. Right, of course not. Evelina, in the early days of Russian aggression, predictions about the fate of Ukraine, like you mentioned earlier on, were very, very grim. Pundits claimed Kyiv would fall within, I believe, three days and that the whole country, Ukraine, within weeks. Now, despite those predictions, Ukraine has stood strong, tall and free, as we said earlier. What do you suppose is keeping Ukraine and its people to stand against Russia? Yes, indeed, few have expected Ukraine to be fighting back and even fewer uh, were expecting Ukraine to prevail. Uh, many people overestimated Russia and underestimated Ukraine uh, simply because they were accounting for the numbers. While in order to understand this Ukrainian spirited resistance, you need to dig into the brutal history of Ukraine-Russia relations. And uh, to put it simply, as many say these days, if Russia stops fighting, there will be no war. But if Ukraine stops fighting, there will be no Ukraine. And Ukrainians understand this very well. So we have no choice but to win this war. Just think about all this resistance from the ground. Think about the kids that are donating money to the armed forces uh, of Ukraine and fundraising money for them. Think about these uh, unarmed civilians that are literally stopping Russian tanks with their bare hands in the occupied territories. And I believe this depicts this Ukrainian spirit very well when every citizen decided to share collective and individual responsibility and to defend uh, their country yeah. those uh, turning this war into a fight for freedom and self-respect and talking about such efforts Hannah after months of hesitancy the US and Germany they finally in late January announced plans to dispatch their battle tanks to Ukraine do you believe that the US will eventually also agree to send its fighter jets to Ukraine and if that does happen how do you expect these jets to perhaps change the course of this warfare in Ukraine? So uh, we are very thankful for tanks, but uh, uh, we need time to integrate the modern uh, tanks into our system and actually to operate in the battlefield. Uh, this is why we uh, do not like this incrementalism or this increment, uh, uh, just very step-by-step -step support. We do believe that uh, we will see political decision to grant Ukraine F-16 and I just came from, uh, you see here, F-16, Rock for Ukraine. So I just came from uh, Munich Security Conference and uh, T-shirts and all the stuff uh, advocating for getting uh, F-16 faster. We made with the key NATO general, people from uh, Pentagon, uh, people from um, UK. We are trying to explain our partners that Ukrainian uh, armed forces are very skilled and uh, we heard before that all oh, Ukrainians need to learn how to operate HIMARS, javelins, stingers, uh, tanks. We are ready and our pilots are ready to reach the air superiority because we need to demilitarize the Black Sea. Why it's important? Because Ukraine belongs to top five exporter of food, agriculture, grain. It's about uh, feeding the millions of people in African continent, in Asia. So if this year, during the planting season, our farmers will plant 30% uh, less uh, seeds, it means that millions of people will suffer of hunger. So this is why we need to liberate all our territories. We need to continue counter offensive operations and let farmers to feed the world and also to demine our territories. So actually, there is no argument why Ukrainians uh, uh, should not get as fast as possible F-16. Uh, and I do believe that our advocacy in Munich, in Washington, and we convince White House to make this important strategic decision for our victory. Right, and staying with that, Evelina, some pundits believe there is a strategic logic perhaps behind the slow build-up approach to providing Ukraine with critical weaponry. What do you suppose do they mean and what are your thoughts regarding that? Well, while I'm not a military expert, obviously, I feel that there is, uh, they see some logic behind this approach uh, in their attempts to um, to prevent Russia from sudden aggressive response or to sort of check the grounds, what will be the Russian reaction with every new type of weapon uh, being delivered to Ukraine? 
and uh, also some uh, some experts and uh, some countries they are probably uh, afraid um, of uh, this war to 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 prolong or to escalate um, and i feel that they were simply uh, mistakenly caught into the russian propaganda narratives or uh, into the russian nuclear threats or they just simply don't want to accept this uncomfortable reality and the reality is that this war has been lasting for the past nine years and it escalated precisely due to the lack of the international support including the military assistance and uh, this um, short build approach plays into the hands of Russia that aims for, uh, for the war um, to, 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 to get the time because uh, they, they don't really care about the overwhelming number of uh, the uh, manpower uh, casualties. They fight regardless of these casualties. What they need is time to uh, train more soldiers and to produce more weapons. Meanwhile, the Ukrainian armed forces have been constantly proving that not only they can successfully and uh, effectively operate with this new weapons, uh, new advanced weapons, but that they can be also trained in a really short period of time. Precisely for this reason, I believe that Ukraine needs more advanced weapons, particularly fighter jets, so we can liberate more of our territories. Right, I see. Hannah, last year on our show, you spoke about the importance of humanitarian assistance to Ukraine using different channels of distribution. Now, for the sake of our viewers who missed you last time, do you care to elaborate on ways people here in Korea could perhaps better support Ukraine's cause? I'm very thankful to Korean people because they understand that what's happening in Ukraine now happened in your country in 1953. And um, Ukrainians want to reunite with our people which are now in the occupied uh, Crimea. We want to be one united nation. I think in Korea, you also have this feeling because you were also pushed and separated. So I think uh, I'm very also thankful because many Koreans now in the uh, service, some joined to the international legion, helping Ukraine to win. And we do believe that your government will permit the weapon transfer to Ukraine because it's in for global security and prevention of a new attacks on independent state in your in the pacific region in asian region so i am very thankful to your people and i really believe one day we will celebrate victories victories of ukraine uh, um, liberating all our territories and also we will see how korea will be uh, united because you are a strong country i visited um, your country i'm really very uh, thankful and impressed by your uh, weapon I industry and i hope also in the future korea will also participate in reconstruction effort bringing higher technologies uh, bringing um, innovations and together with ukrainians we will uh, strengthen democracy worldwide right of course Back here in Korea, Evelina, here you've been partaking in regular protests outside the Russian embassy here in capital Seoul to raise awareness about the plight of the people in Ukraine. Could you tell us a bit more about these efforts? Yes, with the beginning of a full-scale invasion, the Ukrainian community in Korea and Friends of Ukraine started to uh, hold regular protests and impactful protests in front of the Russian embassy here. Um, with the course of the war, of course, the messages raised uh, changed. We now call to recognize Russia as a terrorist state, as a war criminal. We also ask to, to provide um, humanitarian and military assistance to Ukraine to stop uh, trade with Russia and any business with Russia because it directly sponsors the war. We also demand uh, justice and accountability for the war crimes. Uh, additionally, with the embassy uh, of uh, Ukraine in the Republic of Korea, the Ukrainian community here was able to conduct several charity concerts, organized um, different exhibitions, uh, lectures and cultural events uh, that are, are aiming to support Ukraine. And um, additionally, the Ukrainian community in Korea uh, successfully conducted the NEST uh, modular housing project. Where it was a fundraising campaign to, to provide a house for those that, uh, for those families that lost their housing due to the Russian aggression. And despite the fact that the Ukrainian community here in South Korea is relatively small, we've been uh, supporting Ukraine with extraordinary determination. And staying with that, Evelina, is there anything more that the people here could do to perhaps ease the plight of the people in Ukraine? 
Well, I personally believe that every person uh, can make a difference and can make a change. And uh, if your values correspond to our values, uh, you can simply join us during the peaceful protest. Uh, you can help uh, to raise awareness and sharing information. Even posting something on the social media will make a big deal for us. Uh, finally, you can donate to NGOs, as uh, okay. Hanna said, or uh, how governmental funds of Ukraine. And um, last but not least, supporting Ukraine means boycotting Russia, uh, particularly its cultural and uh, sport activities. And, um, you know, many say that this war is a genocide against Ukrainians, but it's also a cultural genocide since Russia is targeting specifically a lot of cultural heritage, uh, architecture, museums, libraries, and um, additionally, uh, many uh, Ukrainian athletes and artists were killed in the course of this war. So, uh, despite this, many Russian artists and at least ballet dancers, they actively support this war. And um, which means that basically uh, applying uh, the neutrality, uh, the principles of neutrality in sport and culture and arts means uh, in this, uh, during the Russian uh, invasion is uh, just unbelievable. And um, that's why we, as a Ukrainian community here, we ask uh, Korean people not to invite uh, Russian dancers, uh, Russian artists and athletes and to boycott uh, uh, and to, to demand the Olympic ban for the Russian athletes during the Olympic Games. At the same time, we are enormously thankful to everyone in Korea, to the Korean people, to the Korean private companies, to the government for all the support they've been providing to Ukraine. It means a lot to us. So thank you so much. Right. And Hannah, is there a message that you would like to share with our viewers as Ukraine marks its one year, first year that is, of remarkable defense against Russia, very briefly speaking? So y Ukraine defeating Russian imperialism is making the world free from authoritarianism because uh, defeating Russia means weakening China, North Korea, Iran, uh, Belarus with uh, dictatorship, uh, reg Lukashenko regime. So uh, I, behind me, there is a global map. So I think Ukraine uh, victory is so geopolitically important for every citizens of our beautiful planet. Right. So this is why the faster we receive weapon, the um, quicker we win and this pain will stop. Right, of course. Hannah, as always, thank you so much for your time and your thoughts. And also, I understand it's your daughter's birthday next month. Do send her my birthday wishes. And Evelina thank here, you. right, Evelina here in the studio. Thank you so much for your insights. Yeah, thank you so much for ha having us and for paying uh, attention to Ukraine and you for are supporting Ukraine. Most welcome. Right. Well, on that note, we end this edition of Issues and Insiders with prayers for Ukraine and all those affected by the warfare. Thank you for watching.